Thank you. Uh, so we only have 15, 15 minutes together, but it'd be rude not to do some quick introductions. My name is Jesse. I'm a staff software engineer here at, uh, at CERN. I've been writing Java software for about 15 years. And for almost all of that time, when I've been writing unit tests, I've been using Makita. Um, so just quickly, what is a mock? What is Makito? A mock is something that we use generally in unit testing, maybe sometimes in integration testing to replace the implementation of a potentially complex class, maybe with a lot of dependencies, maybe it requires a database or some web service, with a much simpler implementation that we can um, use to write more concise and cleaner tests because our code under test um, we can focus on and, and yeah, not have to do all of the setup for that other code, the implementation details that we don't care about for this particular test, test case. Makito is, uh, has been around for sort of 2009, I think it was first released, and for, since then it's been a, quite an opinionated mocking and stubbing library, and these days it has become synonymous with Java unit testing. If you're using Spring Boot and writing tests, you probably already have Makito if you're not uh, available on the class path if you're not using it because it's bundled with the Spring Boot test starter package. For this talk, I'm going to be using a very simple example application that doesn't particularly matter um, the details, but I thought everyone could understand a, a comment service, so we want to be able to create a comment. That comment needs to be val validated in some way with a third-party service, make sure it's not offensive, maybe it contains a cross-site scripting request, something like that, and we also want to clean it, um, provide some transformations on it. It doesn't matter too much, but just to know we'll be talking about this application. The implementation might look like that. So our, um, our comment service is obviously the heart of our application. It's very important. We want to write some unit tests for it. If you're starting with Makito, you're going to end up with a, a test class that looks something very similar to this. Uh, we're going to create the mocks, create the system under test, and inject our mock dependencies. Using the Makito extension, uh, we can use these annotations at mock and at inject mocks to create the mock and then inject it into the system under test using constructor injection. Or we could use in the comment section there just the methods from Makito to create the mock and to uh, create the system under test, passing in that mock. By default, the mocks don't do anything. They just return nulls, empty lists, default primitive values, um, just really basic behavior, which is not going to be very useful for your test. And the whole reason we want to use mocks is to be able to specify the behavior that we want to, want to test. And to do that, we, we need to uh, instantiate our mocks. So Makito gives us two ways of doing this. Uh, this is the first and preferred method, uh, that is the then return family of methods. There's then return, then throw, there's then answer, which I won't get into, into this talk. But the basics of it are we have when, and then inside the when method, we have the mock, and we call the method on the mock with the arguments that we expect. And then we say, then return the result. So the result that we want for our test to be able to work. The alternative syntax is kind of the other way around. You have do return with the result that you want for your test. Then you call when, and this is an important and subtle difference. You pass the mock to the when method call, and then outside of that, you have the method call. Um, and the arguments. So really a small little detail. Sometimes I forget uh, which, which version has the method call inside of the when call and which has it on the outside. Um, but you just need to remember. OK, so why do we have two approaches? Um, I said that the then return family of methods is the preferred uh, syntax. So why do we even need an alternative? Why, don't, why doesn't the Makito library just have the single way to specify behavior? One of the first reasons that you might encounter when you're using Makito is to mock void methods. So void is not a, um, a valid argument to pass into a function. So if you remember, we had win, and then we had the mock, and we called the function, so it returns some sort of value. If your function doesn't return a value, that's going to be a compile error. So you can see here that first code snippet on the right, uh, ID has underlined it. It's not a valid test. It's not going to compile. We can't even run it. So we need, we need this alternative syntax, um, which for do return wouldn't make sense because you have a void method. Why are you mocking the return type of a void method? But we might want to mock that the void method throws an exception. Maybe it does some validation, and we want to mock that that validation error occurs. So we, use, um, we need to use that do throw with the exception that we want to throw, 
and then we call um, win with the uh, and the method call that we expect. So the other reason that you would need to use the de uh, the do return or do then uh, sorry, do throw uh, series of families is for mocking spies. I'm not talking about going down to downtown Geneva and making fun of a few clandestine people that you might encounter. I'm talking about a spy in, in Makito terms. It's a slightly different form of mock that instead of returning uh, boring default values, calls the actual underlying method. And this is a problem using this syntax here. We have, we have the spy and then we have the method call because of the way spies work. That's actually going to call the real method that you're trying to mock, which is probably not what you want to do. So it's not going to work. We need to use the do return. And here you can see why it's important that the method call is outside of the when, so it's not actually being invoked on the spy object. So OK, we could do this, but spies, these partial mocks, are a feature that Makito originally didn't have. Uh, the developers at Makito, being in the, an opinionated bunch, said you don't need to use mocks if you have good clean code. Sorry, you don't need to use spies. If you have good, clean code, then you shouldn't need these partial mocks. They relented on this uh, issue a little bit and, and added spies uh, in, a, in a later version because when you're dealing with third-party code or with legacy code, you can't always uh, exist in that nice, clean environment. You have to make some compromises. So if you have to use a spy, it's there, but really try to avoid it. OK, so we have the preferred syntax, then return. We have this necessary do return syntax. So why isn't that the preferred syntax? You know, why if we have one that uh, does everything that the other does and is, supports these other use cases, um, why why do we need? Yeah, why why is the do not the preferred syntax? If you've ever seen this exception, then you might already know the reason. Uh, I don't know if. I don't know how well you can read it, but it says wrong type of return value here. Integer cannot be returned. OK, so what does this mean? You run your test and you see this error. What has gone wrong? Well, the issue is that the, the, the then return family of methods is type safe. So that means that you can't pass an invalid or unexpected return type to the then return method. You get a compile error. So here in this uh, slide, you can see two code snippets. Both of these are invalid. Both of them have the same issue. We're trying to mock that the integer 1, 2, 3 is returned from our clean text method when it should actually return a string. But compile errors are much easier to spot. You can see in the bottom example that there's a nice under red underline under the integer. That's exactly where our error is. That's what we're going to have to fix before we can run our test. Um, so this means that our test is failing faster, um, which is always you know, a smaller feedback loop. A quicker feedback loop is going to help you write more efficient tests and, and be, um, yeah, be faster. Makes refactoring easier. If you change the return type of a, a function, you're going to have a whole list of compile errors that tells you where you need to fix your tests before you can run them, instead of having to run a potentially lengthy test suite to get those results. Another cool feature of using the then return uh, family of methods is that you can mock multiple invocations or multiple interactions of the same method. So um, for example, we might want to use this to test uh, some sort of retry behavior. So here we have a, a controller um, that is calling create comment and underneath it is calling the comment service and we're setting up a test so that the first time comment service is uh, called, it throws an exception. Uh, it says, oh, I'm not ready yet, I can't handle this request. And we want our controller to handle that exception and trigger a retry. So we can use the chaining of the then throw followed by then return to say the first invocation uh, should throw an exception and the second Im invocation should return the, the comment that we expect. And it's also uh, interesting to know or useful to know that that final uh, invocation that you set up is the one that will be used for all subsequent calls. So if we called um, create comment ABC again, we would get that uh, final result of comment ABC. This is also useful if you're mocking iterators or row sets, result sets, and so on. We need to call dot get to get the next value. And if you're still not excused, you can um, use fewer lines of code to um, 
set up a mock. Using the get mock here, we can create the mock, specify the behavior we want, and then um, return it again so that it's ready to use all in one single line. Fewer lines of code is always better. Ever since uh, Java introduced streams, we've been trying to do things with a single line of code, so this is better. OK, so I've talked about how to create the mock and how to specify your behavior. So what are some of the things that you can do with the mocks? Uh, if you saw Oliver's talk yesterday, you would have seen this one, uh, mock bean. This is an annotation provided by Spring, not by Makito. And what it does is create a mock and make it put it into the Spring context so that it's available for auto-wiring. So this is really good if you have an integration test. So here I have a test that is testing. Uh, the integration between the comments service and the text service, but I want to mock out the text repository. It's a database or a web service call or something that I don't want to deal with in my test. So I can specify a mock and say that the text repository should return this result when it is used. Yeah. Similarly, for MVC tests, we can do the, the same thing. Uh, in this case, an MVC test can be used to test that a particular request is handled uh, a particular web request is handled in a particular way, but we don't want to test the actual business logic of the service because that's already tested by something else. So here we're setting up a web MVC test with the annotation um, at web MVC, web MVC test and for the con comment controller. And we provide the mock bean for the comment service. So the controller is using this mock service. We specify the behavior of the service. So all we're testing here is that the JSON content of our request is handled correctly and passed to the service. Again, making our tests fast and concise and easy to uh, handle. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't have more end-to-end -end tests that test the full application, but these small unit tests can help you maintain uh, API compatibility and make sure the requests uh, handled as they should be. One of the interesting feature of Makito um, is the ability to change the default answers. So I mentioned, mentioned before that um, by default nulls are returned or empty lists or default primitive values. This can be a particular pain when you're trying to mock a builder. So a builder is a, is a pattern where you chain a series of method calls together that um, so in this example, I have a user builder with a username, with an email address, phone number, first name, last name, and so on. Um, so if you had to set this up using the default Makito behavior, you're going to have to mock each one of those invocations. Fortunately, Makito gives us a way to change the default responses uh, that your mock does. So I think it's easier to let Drake explain here. <laughs> We have the, um, at the top, how you might have to do it if you use the default mock behavior. For each one of those builder methods, you have to say that when you are called, please return the mock so that you can keep chaining these methods. Otherwise, you're going to get a null pointer exception in your test. What's really annoying here is that if any of these mocks aren't actually used in your code, then you're going to get an error that we'll see in a little bit. For example, this with facts number here. No one uses facts anymore. Our test code still had it, and we're going to start to get failures if we leave that in our code. The second line, much better. Again, one line of code, always better. We use the uh, we pass the return self answer an extra argument to the mock method to change the way that Makito works. Builders isn't actually a good example of using this feature uh, because with a builder, it's generally a relatively simple class. And you should probably just use the builder itself. Don't mock the builder. Don't mock um, things that are harder to set up as a mock than to just use as it is. But one case where I had to use this in production is a simple JDBC call. In our group, we have a lot of legacy PLSQL procedures that we need to integrate with uh, in our Java applications. Simple JDBC call is, is one way to do that. Uh, using JDBC template and so on, and it follows this builder pattern. So by changing the default uh, answers that uh, the mock was doing, I was able to write unit tests uh, to hide away this um, PLS QR code. So I just mentioned before this um, strict mocking, well, I hinted at the strict mocking exception. Uh, and I also said, said that Megito uh, are quite opinionated developers. And I think this is really um, the highest level of uh, opinionation here. If you set up some, some mock during your, your test code that doesn't get used by your test, the, the um, function is never invo invoked. That was an unnecessary piece of code. Makito will fail. There's no particular reason they have to fail. They could just ignore, ignore your, your mocking. But they say, no, um, 
if I make this a little bit bigger, clean and maintainable test code requires zero unnecessary code. So here they're taking a very strong stance to say you shouldn't have this line of code in your test. Of course, you can work around it. There's a, a lenient option to disable this behavior. So coming to the end, this is from the Makito website. Uh, four simple rules. Some of them I've talked about a little bit already. Um, don't mock value objects or don't mock everything. So if, if the class that you're using is easier to use, then it is easier to mock. Just use that class. Uh, show love with your tests. I think this is a really interesting concept. With your tests, you have the opportunity to tell a real true story about your code. So make that readable and understandable so that your developers can uh, quickly get up to speed. And finally, read the manual. Everything I've talked about here is from the makita.org website and from the Spring website. Um, so yeah, please read those. Read the Java docs as well. It's really good. Read through the exception messages uh, that come from Megiddo because they try to give you as much information as possible about how to fix that value. And that's it. Thank you.